that's a problem. Yeah. Okay. Um. On his morning ICU rounds, Dr. Anand Dubey gets bad news about yet another of his COVID patients. Because it's a bit uh, long now for him to be this bad. He's the chief of medicine. Dr. Subarna Thurignanam is the head physician. They are a power team running the ICU. She was on Sunday. She did really well. And then we put her on her back. And then uh, she slowly got worse on her back. It's like she was good during the day, so we didn't recall her. Then throughout the night, she got a little bit worse. And it's not easing up. There's now a new surge because patients have started pouring in from COVID outbreaks in nearby long-term care homes, group homes, and shelters. And many of the patients are in critical condition. Sorry, her whole body up and then her head up, just to get her offload her belly a little bit, that would probably help as well. The oxygen levels were to get lower, then we have concerns about her having more serious issues like her heart rate going down, her blood pressure going down, and then actually issues with concerning uh, issues about whether she'll actually have a cardiac arrest, then we may actually have an issue that she could pass away. This patient here, just admitted to the ICU, is only 24 years old. Part of the emotional toll on staff is that because COVID is so contagious, families are not allowed in, even when their loved ones are in critical condition. We tell them, you know, we're going to do the procedure in a few minutes. If you have anything to say to your family, then you should say it now. And, and we're there to, to listen to that. And it's heartbreaking. It really is because, you know, these are people with families and, and a life. And, and it's scary that family is not there. And so we, um, we're there holding the phone so that they can tell their family what they really think. But it really also prompts us to, and, and, and makes us passionate to get them better and get them back to their family so they can say those same things to their family, to their face. Dr. Dubé steals himself to call a patient's wife for a very difficult conversation, carefully suggesting that a ventilator might be the best way to save his life. So, um, we, we need to talk about your husband. Um, things, are, uh, things are still okay, but they're a little bit worse today. He's, he's really working a lot harder to breathe, and the oxygen levels are a bit lower. And I think it's getting very close to the point where we might need to uh, put him on a ventilator. Any serious conversation you want in person, you want to see that person's face, you want to be able to react properly to them. Um, but uh, over the phone, it's really tough, but we don't have a choice right now. I'm going to call you from the room, and we're going to talk with him and make a decision. And I think we need to make that decision like right now, like in the next 15, 20 minutes. Getting ready for intubation isn't easy. It almost looks like a wartime operation. The risk of COVID being coughed or expelled is high. So every inch of every team member is covered. It's potentially dangerous for everyone. Respiratory therapist Kelly Travers has put a lot of patients on ventilators. Things have changed a lot with the COVID-19 patients simply because we have to do a lot more preparation. You're always uh, trying to remember all the steps that are somewhat new to some of us and not make any mistakes. Uh, so it is nerve-wracking. Any questions, concerns, everyone understands the rules, responsibilities? Okay, let's go. It's not getting any less intense and it's emotional for everyone. They don't have anyone that is familiar to them that is there to encourage them and tell them everything's going to be okay. They're surrounded by a bunch of strangers, completely gowned, and they can only really see our eyes. And it's very hard to watch someone because we're all human. And uh, it's quite difficult to put yourself in their position and think about how they must be feeling in that moment. We know that every one of those situations could easily end in a cardiac arrest and a very unfortunate outcome. So the stress levels are already high with the worry about staff exposure and they're, and they're extremely high with knowing that these patients are on the brink. And it's not over when the operation is over. That woman in brown is the PPE supervisor, miming for the anesthetist through the glass, telling him how to carefully remove his protective equipment that could be covered in COVID. And 
They're frustrated that Canadians might not realize just how intense all of this can be. That's why the staff agreed to shoot these videos for us. Every day it's different. Um, one day we are happy, one day we're crying. Um, it's challenging because I'm not sure if people really understand or grasp the idea of COVID-19 and how how bad it is right now. It's almost an insult to what we've been doing because we are working so hard to get these people back to their families. When are you coming home? The medical staff worry about their patients, but they worry about their own health too. Every day that I go home from work after I've seen a lot of COVID patients, I worry, like, am I going to bring in COVID into my house? Am I going to get my family sick? I'm losing most of my hair because I'm showering so much. Bye, Bye. babies. Love you guys. Bye. 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 But then, right. I'll see you soon, okay? after 17 days, a COVID patient they've come to know <laughs> is taken off his ventilator. He's leaving ICU, and the staff remembers why they keep putting themselves at risk. Oh, was that for you or for me? <laughs> that was for you, sir. <laughs> Wendy Mesley, CBC News, Toronto.